Hey guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome everyone. I'm gonna give everyone maybe another two more minutes to join us to make sure we're not missing anyone. And then we're gonna start in the meantime, just make sure you have all your supplies and I will go through what kind of supplies you will need in a second as well. Hi. All right, can everyone see me well and hear me well? Let me know before we get too far. Okay, awesome. I'm glad you guys can see everything and hear everything. That's great. All right, and... All right, so everyone can hear me, everyone can see me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So welcome guys, welcome again. If we haven't met before, my name is Vera. I will be your instructor for today. And this is what we're gonna paint, super fun painting. This was originally created by our friend and amazing artist, Dean Sherman. Um, and we have asked him permission, ask his permission to teach it for you today. So yeah. Um, let's go through our supplies. We're going to need a canvas. I'm going to be using 9 by 12 inch, but you're more than welcome to use absolutely any size you can think of. My instructions are not size specific, so any size will work. Um, we're going to need a couple different colors for our student grade acrylic paint, or at least that's what I'm using. I'm using student grade acrylic paint, but you guys are welcome to use any paint you got. Of course, I would recommend acrylic but if you have something of similar qualities, you're welcome to use that too. And I'm using only primary colors, which is uh, blue, red, yellow, plus black and white. And I'll be mixing them into everything that you can see here. If you don't have primaries or if you prefer to use premix, this you're more than welcome to. Um, you're gonna need a couple different shades of green or if you just wanna get one shade of green, I would recommend getting green that's on a darker side and we can easily mix it into a lighter shade, but just mix it with a little bit of white. Um, and of course, you're gonna need teal. So again, you're more than welcome to grab it pre-mix or you can grab uh, primary colors and mix along with me. Another color that we're gonna need to have from pre-mix colors is brown. This is optional because there's a tiny smidge of brown right here, but you're welcome to just replace it with gray. You're not gonna see much of a difference. So again, if brown is too much to mix or to get as a premixed, gray is just fine. And that's it for our paint. We're also going to need a couple different brushes. So this is the brushes I'm gonna be using today. I'm gonna to be using this uh, flat brush with the rounded edges as my large brush. And this is the brush that I'm gonna be using for all my greenery here. Now, if you don't have a brush that's similar to this, so I would say I would recommend medium to large depending on the size of your canvas and on the personal preference so something medium large is perfect for me this is about medium large in size um so yeah depending on the size of your canvas and you are from medium to large something like this is perfect if you have that if not alternatively second best option would be something like this so more of a rounded brush 
And if you use brush like this, you're gonna dab it like this. I'm gonna dab it more flat because flat brushes, you always wanna dab more flat. Um, rounded brushes, you wanna dab like this. But this, either one of those brushes is a great option for all our greenery here. So I'm gonna go with this, but you're welcome to grab this as well. And if you have a brush that's like in a really bad shape, this one is in so-so shape. Uh, but if you have a brush that's in a really bad shape, that's actually perfect for this. So feel free to grab that. Uh, you're also going to need a small detailed brush. We always recommend either number one, number two, number zero, so something really small. But the most important thing about this brush is that it has a really nice pointy tip. So as long as it has a really nice pointy tip, that's perfect. Uh, and for my last brush, I'm gonna use medium. In my case, it's more like a medium small than a medium. And this can be any shape, doesn't matter which shape. Now. Feel free to ask questions in chat. I do see some of them and I'll answer them as soon as I get to them. But yes, I'll be I'll be trying to answer all your questions. So feel free to ask them. And for those who are wondering, the video will remain here on our YouTube. So you can come back and do it anytime. We're not deleting them. They're just going to stay right here. So if today doesn't work for you. If something comes up halfway through, you're more than welcome to come back at some point later. What kind of blue are we using? Yes, I would highly recommend phthalo or primary blue. So just don't have, don't use anything with a purple tint, such as ultramarine. Avoid those because we're mixing them into teal and green, and you will get much, much better teal and green from either primary or phthalo or greenish blue. So that's something on a greener or on a colder side is perfect. For yellow and for red, doesn't matter at all for this because we're only going to use a smidge of red for brown, and yellow, you can use any yellow. It will work just fine. Okay. And of course, we're going to need water. We're going to need a paper towel. You can use reusable fabric cloth if you prefer. And the last thing that I would say we will really need today is a hair dryer. So if you guys are planning to actually stick around and do it live as we're live right now, you will need a hair dryer because pretty much in between every single layer, we're going to dry this painting. If we do it without hair dryer, well, there will be at least a 10 minute dry between every layer. We are not going to make it live. It will have to be a um, very, very long tutorial with a very long, boring, awkward pauses. So that's why we're going to use hair dryer to speed it up um, and to get this done in timely manner. And also so we don't get bored and lose interest in doing this. But if you're doing this later from the video, you don't have to have hair dryer because you can just um, take a tiny little break, go walk around your house, do some chores, and then come back to it. All right, so that's pretty much it. So how are we going to do this? We're going to start with our background. I'm going to do a gradient from... Uh, light bluish teal, tealy blue. So not straight blue with a tint of a yellow. So it's more like a teal color to straight white. And I'll color up, I would say about uh, a bit more than half from the top with that gradient. Then I'm gonna color in my bottom. This very bottom, about a quarter of a canvas approximately. I'm gonna color with this beautiful vibrant teal slash aqua color and this little chunk in between I'm gonna color with green just nice medium green nothing special maybe on a darker side medium to medium dark and I'm gonna curve it a little bit so I know some of you ask why is there a waterfall and there's no mountain we are assuming that there is a mountain in distance it's just because it's so blue and faded, we can't see it because the outline would probably be somewhere behind the tree. So if you want to, if you're one of those people who feel bothered that there is no visible cliff or mountain, you're more than welcome to um, maybe grab a little bit of a darker blue or teal and actually add a little cave there or a mountain or a cliff, something. I'm not going to be doing it. I'm going to stay true to what the painting looked like originally. So, but yes, this is just for those who are wondering, because we did get a lot of questions about that and I'm answering them for you. Vicky, to answer your question of Fathalo or primary, I'm using Fathalo, but either is fine. Fathalo is probably a better choice if you have it. If you don't have it, primary will, works just as well. 
Um, all right, and so then we're gonna start layering things. Then we're gonna add a bit more green here. We're gonna add even darker shade and lighter shade that mixed with a little bit more yellow. And we're just gonna dab, 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 dab all that. Then we're gonna dry it all up with a hair dryer, and we're gonna move to our waterfall. We're gonna add our waterfall, some really beautiful fluffy. Um, oh, sorry, the word left me. I forgot what it's called. The drips of water that go on the bottom. Someone will help me in chat uh, with a word that I'm looking for. But anyway, you guys know what I mean. Then we will dry it up again, and then we'll move on to the rocks, and we'll add our first portion of rocks right here. The rocks that we're gonna add a bit of brown on, and then we again, mist, thank you very much. And then we're gonna dry it up again, and then we're gonna move on to the rest of the rocks. So we're gonna add those. And we're gonna do them straight black. Um, we'll let them dry, and as they dry, we can add a bit of reflection and some different color lines on our water. And then once they're dry, we're gonna go back to them and we will do three shades of green, one after another, we don't have to dry in between. Then we're gonna move through this, then again, we'll dry it or not, doesn't really matter because it only overlaps tree, uh, tree overlaps it, but only just a little bit. So it's not super necessary to fully dry it. And then we're gonna add this tree here. Uh, we're gonna add a tree trunk, dry it again. And then we're gonna finish up by adding all the beautiful greenery on top of our tree. So right now you guys gonna need to grab the biggest brush that you have. And we will start by mixing our first color. So what I am going to do is I'll dip my brush in the water and I'll scoop some white on the side into this white. I'm going to add a little bit of blue, maybe a little bit more. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Vicky. And I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny smidge of yellow. So I'm not aiming for teal that more like this, super vibrant, almost a bit on a greener side, but I still do want to have a tint of that um, teal color or aqua color to my blue. I don't want it to be straight up blue either. So that's why I'm adding just a tiny, tiny, tiny smidge of green to it, smidge of yellow to turn it like a slightly greener shade. And with this, I'm going to go, so if this is the middle of my canvas approximately, I'm going to go a bit lower than that. Let's say somewhere here. And I'm going to start coloring it in. And I'll color in approximately half. Might even go a little lower. All right, and once I have this half colored right away, I can't really wait too long because I want to do this all on wet. I'm gonna wash my brush, dab it off with my paper towel, grab white, and I'm gonna color in the whole upper half in straight white. And then once I color it in fully, I'm gonna start blending my white into my teal, teal into my white. And I'm just gonna continue without refilling my brush, I'm done. Do you see this is covered fully, this is covered fully. So I'm just gonna continue going down with my white into my teal until my brush is completely uh, covered with teal. And then I'm just gonna go up. And I'm gonna repeat the same process over and over and over again until I have a really nice, smooth blending.
All right, that's my sky. I'm happy with this. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna start working on it. I'll give you guys a tiny little minute here, and then we'll move to the next step. I'm not gonna be waiting too long uh, because you can always rewind it. Even as we are live, you can just scroll back and rewatch sections. And because um, the video is gonna stay here forever too, you can always come back and do it from the video. Cause we know some people prefer to do it live cause they feel more like they're doing it in a community. Like we're all together in this and it's a lot of fun. But we also know some people prefer to do it from the video because they can pause and they can, you know, um, make the project, not a couple hour project, a more of a couple day project and really take their time on it. So if that's you, don't rush through this. You can pause at any point and rewatch it. All right, to answer your question, what type of panel is being used? Um, this is just a regular canvas that we got from Michael's, nine by 12 inch, nothing fancy. All right, and once you guys have it, we're gonna move to our bottom. So just divide this visually in half, and the bottom half, we're gonna color in with this vibrant teal. So this, I'm gonna use whatever I have remaining. I'm maybe, I'll make a little bit more because I don't think I have enough. But if you still have a lot of this, you're just gonna add a smidge of yellow to it, and you can just work with that. But for me, I'm gonna need to make a little bit more because I don't have enough. So again, I'll add some white, add some blue, and then add some yellow. This time I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow so it's a touch greener. You don't wanna turn into a full on green either, but you do want it a touch greener than your original color. I think this may have been a little too far. Yeah, actually that's a pretty good color. I'm just going to color in this whole half, bottom half of the section. All right, and now I'm going to move on to this mid part and I'm just going to make, I would say, about uh, medium green. So you can use the same spot if you want for mixing or grab another one. I'll use the same spot because they're super compatible colors. So I'm just going to grab more blue and yellow and we'll mix them up. And I already have a touch of white in there in my teal paint that will mix into this. It will give me nice medium green. Again, any shade of green will do as long as it's not crazy light or crazy dark. Anything in between is good. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and color in this whole midsection with this. All right, and that's pretty much all that we're gonna do before we have to draw it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to mute myself so you don't have to listen to the sounds of my hair dryer. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna blow dry all of this. And I suggest you guys do the same and feel free to let me know when it's done. I will give you all a minute to do this and then we'll move to our next step. All right, and my is dry. This took, what, like a minute? Super, super fast. Um, but I will give you guys another minute just in case you had to go get your hair dryer. All right, guys, do we have it? Do we need a few more minutes? Okay, so let me show you what we're gonna do next. Uh, I'm gonna grab the same large brush, the same color, but this time I'm gonna start flicking it up and go in this more of a curved, um, shape. You might need to make more of this actually. I don't have that much left. So I might need to make a little bit more green. Again, the same shade or similar shade doesn't have to be a perfect match. It's totally fine if it's not. And now I'm going to start flicking from the bottom of this up. But you want to do it quite lightly like I mean if you push a little harder where it starts totally fine but just don't push too hard in the end because you want your uh, ends nice and light and flicky so do you see this is a longer curve
and the same thing on the other side and I may need to make more paint. I have a bad habit. I mean, I don't know if it's a bad habit. Maybe it's a good habit of not mixing enough paint just because I hate wasting paint. So I always under mix it and sometimes I dramatically under mix it and then I have to remix it many times. Well, good thing I don't mind mixing it. All right. That's pretty much it for um, my lines. And then I'm gonna start lightly, lightly dabbing up the top. So here is where you wanna use the just minimal amount of paint, as little as you possibly can. Very, very little. And you just wanna use the brush that's in the worst condition possible. So for me, this brush is not in a horrible condition, but I can make it work. Um, but if your brush is in a horrible condition, that's actually easier. I'm just gonna dab it off lightly on my paper towel to make sure I don't have too much paint on it. And then I'm just gonna lightly press this beautiful textured, um, messy brush line into my canvas. And you see what it does? It creates a nice uh, fluffy texture. So again, if you're using flat brushes, you're gonna use them flat. If you're using pointy brushes or rounded brushes, you can use them like this. And you only just lightly, lightly touch it. And then we're gonna go all over this edge to make it look like trees, some greenery in the distance. And definitely go over here, go down, because right now your texture is linear. We actually don't want linear texture. We want, um, texture like this we want a dabby texture it's just it's easier to do it in a linear way originally but we will be getting rid of that linear texture All right, so do you see it was a beautiful, uh, beautifully dubbed up line? And then right away, I don't have to dry this for the step. I'm gonna dab it with two more colors. The first color I'm going to go with is going to be lighter. It doesn't actually matter. You can start with darker one and finish with lighter. I'm going to start with lighter and I'm going to finish with darker. I'm not even washing my brush. I'm just going to grab some yellow on the side. But I did make sure I dabbed off my brush and paper towel so it doesn't have too much paint left on it. Basically no paint left on it. But I just don't need to wash it because I'm going to use dry brush anyway with similar color. So I'm just... 
I, dab I grabbed some yellow from the side, I grabbed some white and whatever green I was, I still had on my brush, mixed them up and you see it created a nice lighter green color. So this one is like a lime green or just beautiful yellowy green. Let's see. Uh, and we're going to start dabbing and doing exact same thing that we did with the first one. Like We're not doing lines, of course, but you're not going to bring it as high up. You're mostly going to break up this really chunky blobby areas. You see, just adds, makes it more interesting as another shade. So it's not so monotone and one color. By the way, guys, I love that you list where you're from. Just Thank you for doing that. It's really cool for me personally to know where we're all from and to feel like we're all over the place. But we're doing this together. You see, it looks a lot more interesting now versus when it was just one color. Hi. Yes, that sounds great. Yeah, just hang out with us. You can paint anytime. It's going to be right here. All right, guys, and then I'm gonna move right away to my next one and then I'm gonna do dark color. So I did dark color, notice I just added it mostly closer to the upper part. So I'm gonna use this as a base. I'm gonna grab a bit more yellow, a bit more blue, mix them up. So basically I'm not adding um, black to it at all. I'm just adding, I'm darkening it up by adding more blue. However, if your blue doesn't do the trick, if it's not dark enough for you to get a dark green out of it, you're more than welcome to add a smidge of black. Just my case, it, it's not really needed. But yeah, go for it if it needed. And then again, I'm just going to grab a tiny touch. I'll dab it off on my paper towel. And then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start adding a bit of that darker green right here. And of course, I will overlap my lighter colors too. All right, let me show you in a different angle because I know it glares a little bit. So do you see this looks darker, this looks lighter. So that's pretty much it. I'm happy with this. Um, again, you could go even darker, but I think I'm going to stop. I like it. Yes, thanks for joining. All right, so once you have it, whenever that may be, Grab your hair dryer and start drying it up. And I'm going to, again, mute myself so you don't have to hear all the hair dryer sounds. And I'm going to hair dry all of this, mostly the green part, and then we're going to move to your waterfall. Uh, where should I put my palette? Let's put it here.
All right, again, as you can see, this took literally two minutes. Hair dryer, if used in between the layers, cuts out so much time. Again, it's not necessary. If you're just, you know, having a night, pour yourself a cup of something delicious, and uh, maybe you have even, you know, maybe you're watching two things at a time. Maybe you're doing a tutorial and watching your favorite TV show or listening to some documentary. I don't know what you like to do when you paint um, along with painting, but maybe you just cozy it up and you have all the time in the world and you don't mind letting it dry naturally, then do that. But hair dryer is always a good option to speed it up. All right, so my is ready to go. And the next thing I'm gonna move on to is my waterfall. So I'm gonna grab, using again, just the same brush still, I'm gonna start by not using too much paint in my brush. I'll grab a decent amount, but not a huge amount either. Because I want it semi-transparent. So I grabbed some. Now I'm gonna rub it in my brush. Now you see it's way less and it's really rubbed in my brush. And I'm gonna start by putting it somewhere on the right side here. Great, and I'll do this again. And you can make it wider or thinner. It is entirely up to you how thick or thin your waterfall is going to be. But you see, you can still see somewhat the background through. This is what you want, you want that. And then later, once you've done this first layer, if you wanna have some more solid spots, you can actually grab more paint and add it in a couple spots to have a spots that are a bit more solid and not have everything that's uh, transparent and see-through. But it's good to have some see-through spots as well. And then after that, we're gonna to move to our bottom. And keep in mind, you don't wanna start all this misty fluff very low because we will be adding rocks right here. So they will cover up a portion, not a large portion, but they will cover up a portion of the bottom. So you wanna bring your mist higher up so you can see it behind the rocks. And again, using just a little bit of paint on your brush, you're gonna start adding uh, brush strokes in a rounded motion. You see, you're dry brushing it on. So this is my first layer. You see, it's really nice and transparent and fluffy. And then once you have that, you can grab a bit more paint and do second layer that's a little bit more visible. So you're using a bit more paint, but this time you don't go as close to the edge. You stay a bit closer to the middle of this whole misty fluffy section so that your edge ends up being a bit more transparent and your middle a little bit more solid. Right, and that's my waterfall. I'm happy with it. Again, I'm not going to touch it. I like it. I'll leave it.
And then once again, you can go ahead and dry it. And I will do the same. All right, and again, mine is dry. And actually, guys, uh, now that I'm looking at it, I feel like I could go even whiter, which is good because it's dry now, so it will accept more paint. Because before, like you can really, you can only layer so much white, right? Before it um, starts not accepting any more paint before it dries. So now that it's dry, I can layer a bit more white to make it even lighter. Guys, does anyone have any questions? Ask away if you do. All right. Um, does anyone need a few more minutes or are we good to go? Because I'm not going to be drying this, by the way. It's totally fine like this. It's a very thin layer. Not a problem. I can move to my next step and it will blend a little bit possibly. And that's okay with me. I don't have a problem with that. Previous layer had to dry because it was two layers. It was a lot. This one is just a touch. It's fine. Yeah, great. All right, so um, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna grab smaller brush this time. I'm gonna move to my medium small brush and I'm gonna grab some black. Oh no, I'm sorry, your hair dryer blew your extension cord, that's not a fun surprise. So I'm gonna grab some black, I'll water down a little bit because my black generally is a bit thicker because I'm using for a majority of it, I'm using my favorite paint, at least one of my favorite paints, Start, but um, they've been out of stock for this paint for a while now so we're using all of our long uh, supplies that we got a long time ago so but i'm out of black so i'm using the artist loft acrylic for black which is a good paint too i have nothing against this paint but it's much thicker so i have to water it down every single time so i have to water it down because it just doesn't flow right if it's not watered down and now Oh, that was my hair dryer. Now I'm gonna start adding those rocks in the distance, and I'm gonna start with the rock right here. So I'm gonna add it here, and then this one, and then you can make it any shape that you want it to be. In the bottom of those, I'm going to make some more right here. 
We'll do this at the bottom. And then you can go ahead and color them in and I'll grab my large brush for that. And then, while this is still really wet, I'm going to start adding my brown. So I'm going to mix my brown. And to mix brown, oh, wrong palette, oopsie oopsie, that's the right palette right here. I'm going to grab um, red and yellow, about equal parts. And then I'm going to add a block. And then I'm going to add a bit of white. And with a smidge of light brown, I'm going to go over right here. You see, I'm adding little lines. And once I have that, I'm just going to grab a straight white. I'm not even washing off my brush. I'll just dab it off on a paper towel. Then I'll grab straight white. And I'm going to go in there. And why I do all of this on wet is because it does blend into exact shade that I need, which is more like a grayish brown. I don't want it to look like straight white in the end. All right, so you could go more than that. Like you can do a lot more white or you can stop here. It really is up to you how light you want it to be in the end. I think I'm good with this. So once again, I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to go below dry this because I cannot move to next step until this is dry. So that's what I'm going to do here.
All right, so again, this is pretty dry. There's silk, like this spot, that spot, this spot. They're still quite wet, uh, but it's totally fine because I mostly need the bottom to be dry. If some of the very top is wet, it's not, it's okay for me personally here. Um, to answer your question, what colors did I mix for the rocks? So rocks, I did a straight shade, a straight black for the base. Then I did a little bit of brown mixed with white on top and then straight white and all that on wet. So it all mixed up into this. And brown is a, ro a red and yellow equal parts. Then uh, black little by little. So three colors. And after this, I'm going to take more black and I'm going to move on to this rock and this big rocks right here with the greenery. So again, I'm going to use my medium small brush. I'm going to take some of my watered down black. Okay, and I'm gonna start by putting a rock right here. You can make it any shape again, whichever you want. So one black rock, then I'm gonna do a little bit lower again, starting somewhere around here, a second one. Again, you're more than welcome to make it any shape you want it to be. Right, then I'm going to add a straight line on the bottom here. And a second rock. I'm not going to outline it because it's all going to be covered black here, so there's no point. But I will just add this bottom part. So it's going to go a bit lower here. And then the last one, a bit lower again. All right, so those are my three rocks there. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna switch my brush and I'm gonna color them in with black. Yeah, no worries, Vicky. Thanks for hanging out with us. Company is always good. All right, so I switched to my large brush. And I'm just gonna color it all in. Notice I'm not going to add the other two rocks just yet. I will add them later after I add all those horizontal lines. It's just easier that way. And again, I will do what I did with everything else. I will um, dry it. <laughs> I'll grab my hair dryer and I'll go ahead and I'll dry it all. And again, I'll mute myself for it.
done, done, and done. Super, super, super dry for me. How is everyone doing so far? Are we doing okay? Do we have questions? Does anyone need help with anything? All right, if no one needs help with anything, I am going to go right back into it. And I'm gonna move on to all this beautiful greenery here. So I'm gonna start with my uh, dark green, then I'm gonna move to light green, and then I'm gonna do this almost like a yellow mixed with white. So let's use, I'm gonna be using the same brush. I'm gonna be using this large brush that I'm using, um, just because that seems to be the one that does the trick for me as far as greenery and the, the right texture because I want that beautiful fluffy texture. However, whatever brush does this for you, that's the one you wanna go with. Medium, large, whatever shape that may be, um, as long as it does the right job, that's what you want. And I'm gonna start by making that darker green, but this time you have to add a little bit of white into it. Even though you're aiming for a dark color, you still have to have some white. And I may need a bit more yellow on my palette. So I'm mixing some blue and yellow. It's pretty dark green, but I will add a bit of white to it. And the reason why is I'm not adding it over white background. I'm adding it over black background. I'm gonna be adding it on those black sections. So I do need it to have white. If it doesn't have any white in it, it may be a perfect color, but once it dries on your black, you're not going to see it again. So that's very, why very important to add at least a little bit of black. And I'm gonna start by um, fluffing, I'm gonna start fluffing up my rocks. I'm gonna start with the furthest one and I'm not gonna go right on the inside. I'm actually gonna go on the outside a little bit too. So on the inside and on the outside of my rock. You see? And then I'm gonna bring it down and the further I go, the less I should be adding and the smaller my burst, my dabs should be getting. And then I'm gonna bring it a bit further down here. So I'm gonna cover up like a bigger chunk on top there. And I'll continue going down. I'm covering less and less as I go down. Then I'm gonna add a um, second line here. So do you see there is a second line there? Then a third line. And then I'm gonna move on to this rock here. So I'm gonna start somewhere right here. And again, remember this is a color that's gonna be under other two colors. So you always can add a bit more of it because then you're gonna overlap other colors over it. So if you add just a touch like this, you're gonna barely see it. So you're gonna to need to add a bit more here. And then my last rock here. Okay. And I'll add a tiny smidge right here to behind this rocks. Okay. 
that's great. That's it for this color. And then as soon as you have it, you can move to your next color. So for the next color, you can use that as a base. Just add lots more yellow and lots more white. Maybe that's actually a little too much white. So we're trying to make that beautiful light green again. All right, I think that's the one. And again, I'm only gonna use a tiny touch of it. And I'm gonna do all the same things. I'm gonna go on the upper part of all those dubby sections. You see you're overlapping, but you're not covering all your previous green. Make sure some of your previous green is definitely need to be still visible. Because otherwise, what's the point of editing it, right? So make sure you see both of your greens. And of course, I'm going to add that right here too. And then I'm going to move to my third color, which is going to be just yellow mixed with white. I'm not even going to wash my brush. I'm just going to, again, dab it off in my paper towel, which, by the way, I'm going to need a new one because this one is soaked and dirty. Let's grab a new one. <laughs> So here is some white, here's some yellow, might even use more white. I'm gonna mix them up, make a super, super light yellow. And with this color, again, using just a tiny touch of it, I'm gonna go on the upper part of all of that. Done. As you can see, all of them have that beautiful green in three colors, which is great. I don't think I'm gonna be adding any more of that. So again, I'm gonna wash off my brush and I will dab it on my paper towel. And then after that, I'm gonna move on to my bottom. So I'm going to move on to my water. I'm going to let it naturally air dry for a little bit because there's other stuff that I can be doing. Um, and I'm going to start with a darker color here. You could technically use that dark gray, that uh, dark green that you used here. If you still have it, you're welcome to use it. Or you can mix a custom color that's a little bit more on the bluer side, but it should still be more like a medium dark to dark, depending how dark you want it. And you can use either small brush for it or a medium small. I'm going to use my medium small 
but only because it has this nice pointed tip that I personally absolutely love using. Um, it kind of gives you the same look as a small brush. It just takes faster. And I find that my lines are straighter using this. So I just prefer it. But small brush is always a good, safe choice for this. So I'm going to mix my custom color. Why not? But if you want to, you can use just dark green. It's totally fine. I keep grabbing the wrong palette because it's so similar in colors. This is the right palette. Oh my goodness. I need to put that one away so it doesn't tempt me to grab it. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, yeah. Okay. My camera is back. All right. So here is my blue. I'm going to take a bit of my blue. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. And then I'll start adding yellow little by little. So again, I would like to keep it a bit on a bluer side versus my uh, dark green where it was a bit on a greener side. But do you see, it's still like a nice emerald or teal somewhere in between. And with this color, I'm going to go underneath my rocks. I'm just going to add a bit of couple lines here. And then imagine that there will be a rock here. So add a couple underneath where you're going to be adding a rock. So this is approximately what it should look like. And after that, you can go ahead with white. So again, use whatever brush is comfortable for you. I'm gonna continue using the top edge of my medium small. And I'm gonna grab just a little bit of white. And then this time I'm gonna go right under my rocks. So I'm gonna add a bit here, a bit right here. Here. Make a little pathway here. A little bit around this rock too. All right, I think this is a good amount. I don't think I want to have any more of it, but of course you can add as much as you want. Totally fine. You can't ruin it with having too much white. And once you have it, we can add our final rocks here. So I'm just going to grab some black on the same brush and I'll add my final rocks. And one right here. You can do this one any shape you want it to be.
All right, that's what it looks like. And we have done pretty much everything at this point except our tree. So the tree is the only thing that we have left at this point. And I would say the tree is the trickiest part and not the whole tree. It's mostly just the branches. So what we're gonna do is we are going to start with our tree trunk. We're gonna bring it from the edge in and you can use any brush that you want. If you wanna use medium brush, great. Uh, it would be thicker right away, but then you can go back and thicken up a bit more the end. And if you can't make a fine line at the end, you can switch maybe at this point to a small brush and just finish up with a small brush. Or you can even grab your small brush and do small brush the whole way. Start with one line, for example, just one thin line, and then go little by little and thicken it up at the beginning. So it needs to be thicker where it grows from and it grows from that side, right? And it needs to be gradually getting thinner as it goes until the end. Once we're done our tree trunk, we're gonna add branches. And the branches are gonna have all those weird twisted shapes. So some of them uh, are gonna be straight, some of them are gonna be twisted. I'm gonna do my shapes. You can either repeat after me precisely or you can do your own shape. Uh, it's really up to you how you wanna go about it. And then we're gonna add a bit of gray or white, depending on how wet it is. If it's wet, super wet, we can just add white so it blends into gray. If it's already drier by then, then we can just make gray and add some gray here to highlight that tree trunk a bit. And then we're gonna blow dry it for a last time. And then we're gonna add three shades of green as well. So do you remember how we added three shades of here? We're gonna do the same three shades here, but in a different order. Here, we're gonna start with our light green. We're gonna do everything in the light green. Then we're gonna grab our dark green and we're just gonna add dark green where it needs to go. And then we're gonna add yellow mixed with white and we're gonna add it on top. And if you want to in the end, you can even add a little white highlight. You can add white highlight here. You can add white highlight to the crown of your tree. Super optional. So this is what uh, it's coming, just so you guys know what to expect. I'm going to move on to my tree trunk and I'm going to use my medium brush here. Medium small. I mean, it's medium, but it really is a medium small. It's medium to me, but it's medium small for real. I'm going to use some of my watered down black and I'm going to start my tree trunk. I would say somewhere right here. We'll do a little curve and twist down. Gonna curve up and then twist down. Now I'll go over it a couple times to make sure it's thick enough at the end. So there are some areas that I would like to thicken up here. All right, so do you see the end is thicker? Um, this end is thicker, the other end is thinner. And now I'm gonna start adding branches and you're welcome to use any brush. I can still get away with using this brush again because it has this pointy tip that can give me super fine lines if I needed to. If I apply a bit more pressure with the same tip, they're wider. If I apply even more pressure, they're even wider. So as you can see, I can get a variety of lines, a great variety of lines using just the exact same tip of a brush. It just depends on how much pressure I apply. More pressure, thicker line. Less pressure, thinner line. But again, you're more than welcome to use different brushes if needed. And I'm gonna start adding all those weird twisted branches. So I'm gonna start with this guy here. So I'll do something like that. You're not gonna see them as much in the end. You're gonna see mostly this part and this bottom branch. The other ones you're not gonna see as much. I'll add one right here. Maybe I'll run a couple more coming out from them. Again, I'll likely not see them, but why not, right? Let's add them anyway. I'll do one here. All right, so that's good for my tree. 
I'm happy with this. I like the shape. I like the movement. I like the branches. I'll keep it. Again, if you need to, if you are into more copying it precisely, you can just pause the video here and um, stay here for a while and just copy your branches. Need one more little one here. Great. Uh, or you can do your own thing. And then I'm going to move on to this really long one. So this one, you can do any shape or you can copy. So I'm going to do straight then down then twist line. And then from here, I'm going to do second branch this way. Right, I'm pretty happy with my branches. Again, yours can be any shape. And then I'm gonna move to my gray. And I'm gonna use my small brush for that. Uh, because mine's pretty wet, I might get away with white. So I'm just gonna start with white and see how it goes. Yeah, I think it is wet enough for me to still add white and for it to mix in. You see, I'm adding brush strokes of white, but it's just mixing into gray, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. If I didn't do that, then I will have to mix my white with black to actually make gray. Just on the upper part of my tree trunk. Do something like that. And that's pretty much it for my tree. So what I'm gonna do now is again, I'm gonna pause this, uh, sorry, not pause it, mute it, mute myself, and I'm gonna go ahead and dry it so I can move on to my greenery. All right, and it is dry. So I'm ready to move to my greenery. Let's mix my color. I'm gonna use my large brush again, use whichever brush you were doing this texture with, that one. But you might find it easier, at least on the first layer, to use large brush regardless of what texture it gives you, because you're not gonna see much of your first layer texture. You're mostly gonna see your second layer and third layer texture. But of course, if it's the same brush, that's even more perfect. So I'm gonna use this one and I still have some light green. So let's see, let's start with this and see if it's enough. If it's not enough, we'll mix it again. I'm gonna start and I'm gonna go quite heavy on the very top because this is supposed to be fully colored in. So I'm gonna go quite heavy here. So when my brush is still full of paint, I'm gonna go right in the middle of this section because that's where the section that's supposed to be fully filled in. So it's good that I have a lot of paint on my brush. And then as I go to the edge, I can start using brush with less paint on it. So do you see? Now it creates that texture because I'm running out of paint. So it creates that beautiful fluffy texture that we wanted that we use throughout this whole painting for the greenery. Then I'm gonna refill my brush. And again, I'm gonna go on a section that's supposed to be fully filled in. Every time when you use a fresh brush, you wanna start with the area that is gonna have a bit more filling, and then you can spread it as you start running out of paint towards other areas. A 
All right, and then I'm gonna grab just a touch of paint and I'm gonna do all those other areas. So at the end of all branches. By the way, what you're not doing is you're not following the branch along. That's a no-no. You wanna do more like a little cloud at the end of the branch. A couple of dabs at the end of each branch. All right, this is what it pretty much looks like for me. You see there are sections that are super, super solid and sections that are nice and light and fluffy. Yay, Carol, that's a great idea to put it on TV. It's, you're, you're right, it's so much easier. On a small screen, this is already small details, and they're just even smaller on a small screen. You're right, it makes a huge difference. Alrighty, guys, and once we have this, I'm going to move to my next color, which is going to be my dark green. So just mix some, well, by now you probably know how to make a dark green, but I'll repeat it again. Yellow and blue. Lots of blue, not that much yellow, but still a good amount because we're not trying to make it blue we're trying to make it a green just dark green and then you're going to grab add black if needed in my case not really needed and then you're just going to start dabbing up the bottom parts here All right, so I did quite a bit there. Well, I might add a touch here and there as well, but not too much on the bottom. You know what? I will go darker. I will add a touch of black to mine. Not just a bit more of it, because I feel like it's still a little too light. Maybe not, right? Oh, maybe not that much. Oh yeah, that's nice. I like it. And then I'll be ready for my last color, which is just yellow mixed with white. So make sure you wash your brush really well. Now I'll use the exact same brush. I'm just gonna grab some white, some yellow, mix them up, make a super, super light color. And with this light color, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna dab up the upper parts this time. Some on the smaller areas here. And then here's an optional color. Optional color here is white. So you can grab a little bit, 
tiny touch of straight white if you want to and just finish it up with just a smidge of straight white but a you can completely skip it if you want to b if you decide to go with it use just bare bare minimum That's a little too much. Yeah, and if you want to, you can add a bit of white here too. Again, it's super optional, you don't have to, but if you wanted to, you could. I would just say, if you love it, don't touch it. But if you feel like, mm, I kind of like it, but you could use some, you could use something else, then you can try some white. And after that, guys, the only thing that's left for you is a signature because we are officially done. This is what it looks like. You just have to find a good spot and you put your name or your signature or your initials or anything else that you would like to signify that this is your beautiful artwork. And another thing you could do that's super optional is you could do your edges. There are a couple different ways to do your edges. One of them is color matching which in this case would be pretty easy because there are not that many shades that touch the edge. Here you could just do white um, or light blue. Here it's, you could choose uh, either a couple of greens. Basically, if you make your three greens again, light green, dark green, and medium green, um, you could do all your edges with that plus black. So you basically whatever goes to the edge, you bring it over the edge. So here it would be black at first, and then you can dab up some colors if you want, or you just keep it black. Here would be your uh, teal, teal, black, teal, black, um, green of multiple shades or one shade, white or light blue, green of one shade, just light green, green. So it's not that hard, especially if you still have some on your palette and maybe you don't need to mix them at all. Or it, if you do mix it, it's minimal amount of mixing because you already know how to mix all of that and you probably have at least half of those colors still in your palette. Option number two, you choose color that's compatible or color that you already have. So for example, here you have a lot of green. So you can do all your edges green or you can do all your edges blue because you have quite a bit of blue too. Um, or my favorite is black. I think black is universally good color for the edges because it makes it look almost framed. So I would say black is a good option, but see for yourself whether you like it or not, because black will be very contrast and kind of in your face color. So you decide whether you like it or not. I like it. And yeah, I would recommend doing your edges because this is not a good look. So if you're planning to hang it on a wall, when you look from, like let's say you're walking into the room, you see the edge, it's kind of a bit of a ruiner. It, you can do a perfect job here and have a um, funny edge like that and it looks unfinished, it just looks messy. And that's, of course, you're welcome to always frame it too if you love it and you wanna spend time on, you know, going into your garage workshop or asking your partner to do it for you. You can do that too. Yeah, and that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Does anyone have questions? I'll wait for a little bit to see. If anyone has any questions, because I would love to help you out. If you do have any questions, yes, you're very welcome. And guys, if this is your first time with us and you enjoyed it, feel free to like and subscribe. We go live here or sometimes we upload video tutorials. It depends on a week. Some weeks we go live, some weeks we upload video tutorials. But yeah, there's always at least one new tutorial a week, whether it's live event or pre-recorded video tutorial. 
and it the ranges of medium are acrylic, watercolor, pencils, so anything you can think of. And feel free to check out other videos too. And of course, if you enjoyed it, feel free to support us. We we'll love when people support us. And um, the ways you can support us, if you did enjoy this tutorial, you can either share this with a friend, you can recommend us, or you can tip us monetarily tip. There's a PayPal link in the description of this video that you can use for that. But again, any support, any and all support, however you choose to do that, is greatly appreciated. Yay, I'm glad you guys enjoyed this. That makes me happy. And uh, there's also a link in the description of this video um, to where you can post your results. I'll actually double check if it's there. And if it's not there, I'll add it there. Uh, but yes, feel free to share it. We we'll love seeing how they turned out because it makes us feel like we all did it together. It's very satisfying for us as instructors to see your results, whether finished, unfinished, whether you're happy with them or not, or whether you're looking for advice or critique, we'll love to see them. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for joining me tonight. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. Bye, guys.